Subject Verb Agreement As the name suggests, it is evident that in a sentence we should always ensure that the subject and the verb should agree with each other in number and person. Let us look at an example. Bird flies. Birds fly. In the first sentence, the subject bird is singular, and hence a singular verb flies is used. In the second sentence, the subject birds is plural, and hence we use a plural verb fly. Note that, unlike nouns, a singular verb ends with an S, and plural verb doesn't. Let us look at another small example. He is here. They are here. In the first sentence, the subject used is he, which is singular, and hence the auxiliary verb is also singular, is. In the second sentence, the subject used is they, which is plural, and hence the auxiliary verb used is also plural, are. Simple, right? So let us remember the basic rule here. Use singular verb for singular subjects and Plural verb for plural subjects. To find whether the subject and verb are in agreement, first find the subject and the verb in the sentence, and then check for their agreement in number. There are sentences where finding the subject might be confusing. Example, from the ceiling hung the chandelier. So what is the subject here? The ceiling or the chandelier? To make it simple, let us identify the verb first. The verb is hung. Now, who or what hung? The chandelier. Hence, the chandelier is a subject here. Subject is always the doer of the action. There are a few rules to be kept in mind when dealing with subject-verb agreement. Rule number one. When the words like these are used as subjects, they take the singular verb. Consider these examples. Everybody knows the answer. Nobody speaks German here. Neither of the boys was present. Rule number two. The non-intervention principle. In a few sentences, we might come across prepositional phrases which might confuse us. Now, what is a prepositional phrase? Prepositional phrase is a preposition plus object. This object can be a noun, a pronoun, a gerund or a clause. And these objects can also have modifiers attached to them. Consider the examples given. Now, in a few sentences, a prepositional phrase might come in between the subject and the verb. Note that, this prepositional phrase will not affect the number of the subject. Example, the teacher as well as the students was working on the problem. What is the subject here? The teacher, which is singular. The verb phrase is was working, which is also singular. The prepositional phrase used here is as well as the students and this does not affect the number of the subject here. Other prepositional phrases that function like this are in addition to, together with, along with, accompanied by, except, and so on. Let us look at another example. Ms. Dhoni, together with his wife, was seen at the stadium. Do we have a prepositional phrase separating the subject and the verb here? Yes, the prepositional phrase used here is together with his wife, which according to our rule shouldn't affect the number of the subject. So, our subject here is MS Dhoni, which is singular. Hence, we use a singular verb. Rule number three, proximity principle. When subjects are joined by words such as neither nor, either or, not only but also, etc., the verb must agree with the subject that is closest to it. Consider an example. Neither the man nor his wife knows the answer. 
Here, the subject that is closest to the verb is wife, which is singular. Hence, a singular verb knows is used. Let us look at another example. Neither the man nor his friends know the answer. What is the subject here? His friends, which is plural. And hence, a plural verb no is used. So, let us see you correct this sentence. Either the boy or his sister are coming with us. Is there any error in this sentence? Yes. The subject here is his sister, which is singular. Hence, we should use a singular verb here. So, the correct sentence is, either the boy or his sister is coming with us. So, what about this sentence? Either the boy or his sisters are coming with us. This sentence is correct. Plural verb are is used as our subject here is plural. His sisters. Rule number four. A special case of collective nouns. Collective nouns name groups composed of members. Example, audience, family, flock, class, herd, group, caste, team etc. As the members of a group behave as both herd animals and solitary creatures, collective nouns can be either singular or plural depending on context. When the members of the group do one thing in unison with the other members, the collective noun becomes singular and hence requires singular verbs and pronouns. Example, our team has won every game this year. On the other hand, Sometimes, when the members are seen functioning as individuals independently, these collective nouns become plural. Example, the team are divided as to who should keep the wickets during the next match. Here, the focus is on individual team members. Therefore, team becomes a plural subject. Similarly, the film's cast is rehearsing for today's show. Here, the members of the cast function as a single unit. Hence, cast takes a singular form. The film's cast are rehearsing their lines. Here, the members of the cast function as individuals doing different things. Hence, cast takes a plural form. As a general rule, we use plural verb when two or more subjects are connected by and. But there are a few exceptions. A few examples are listed. Bread and butter tastes good. Here, bread and butter are so strongly connected that they form a composite subject, expressing one idea rather than two. Similarly, when law and order breaks down, there is chaos in the city.